Myself, Mary Andrews, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Application Center, SS College, Ernakulam. Today, I will be discussing about what data is, different types of data, and also the sources of data. So, what is data? By definition, data is a collection of known facts or information. Now, when it comes to statistics, or when it comes to statistical investigation, collection of data is the first step in any any statistical investigation. Now here utmost care must be exercised in collecting the data because they form the foundation of any statistical analysis. If there is any mistake in the collected data, the conclusion drawn can never be reliable. Now after collecting data, you can analyze or you can organize, present and analyze the data. The data collected from the published source are generally in is in an organized form, which we will come to later. However, large mass of figures that are collected uh, needs to be organized in a particular manner, and it could be represented in a form of diagrams and graphs. And our next step is to analyze the data. The purpose of analyzing the data is to dig out information which are useful. Um, for decision making and some of the commonly used methods for statistical analysis are the measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, correlation regression, ANOVA etc. which we will study later. The final step is interpretation. Interpretation is nothing but drawing conclusions which is uh, based on the analysis that we have done earlier and the interpretation of data it requires um, a high level of expertise. It is a very difficult task. Now, the data can be either quantitative or qualitative. Now, we'll have a look at the types of data. Now, data is divided into two. One is quantitative, another is qualitative. Again, there is another classification Quantitative data can be divided into two, discrete and continuous. Whereas, qualitative data can be divided into two again, that is nominal and ordinal. Now, let's have a close look or a detailed look at what quantitative data and what qualitative data is. And afterwards, we will have a closer look at discrete data continuous data, nominal data, and ordinal data. Now, quantitative data. The data which can be measured numerically are called as quantitative data. Now, as an example, I would like to uh, tell you that example of number of apples in a basket the height and weight of students in your college or in your class or the height and weight of uh, the members in your family. These all constitute uh, the examples for quantitative data. Now, as I said, quantitative data is uh, again divided into two. One is the discrete data and the other is the continuous data. Now, you can take a closer look at what a discrete data is. I have given the example of number of apples over here. And again, the example for continuous data I have given height and weight. Uh, it can be the height and weight of a student or height and weight of a particular individual or a group of individual. So these data are uh, called together is called a quantitative data. So again, I would like to say that quantitative data is, it can be measured numerically. Okay, so you have to know this. Okay, so let's have a detailed look at what discrete data is. Now, uh, I have given a picture of uh, family members over here. Okay, the first picture is a picture of family members. So that is an example of discrete data. That is the number of members in a family. Okay, and also I have given a picture of a paper with a pen, pencil, that is a number of, it represents the number of questions um, in, an, in a test. Okay, now let's see what the definition is. The data 
that has values which are distinct or have fixed values as I said the example now you connect with the example example the number of members in your family and the number of questions in a test paper now when you come to continuous data I have given uh, two pictures over here a picture of a baby is given here if you closely just look at the picture of the baby you can see the weight of the baby and it's written as 3.800 that is 3 kg and 800 grams right whereas uh, I have given another picture over here that is a, pic uh, a picture which represents the temperature so here the temperature is uh, uh, is, rep is uh, uh, represented in terms of degree Celsius and uh, as you know if you have fever uh, what would you say I have uh, I had a hundred and two degree two point two degree Celsius right so all these values or all these are examples for continuous data now let's have a look at uh, the definition of continuous data it is nothing but it is a quantitative data again continuous data is also quantitative data that can be measured but it has a fi infinite number of possible values within a selected range for example the temperature range height or weight of students so these are all example for continuous data now let's have a closer look at what qualitative data is now qualitative data is again divided into two and that is nominal data and ordinal data now let's have a look at the definition of qualitative data the data which cannot be measured numerically but its presence or absence can be felt are called qualitative data now let's have a look at the example now here qualitative data that uh, examples of qualitative data is given as the gender of a person male or female again another example the feedback of a customer whether it is good satisfactory or bad so again the gender of a person the uh, male or female belongs to the uh, nominal data category and the feedback of a customer uh, that is good satisfactory or bad uh, belongs to the ordinal data category now let's have a detailed look at what nominal data and ordinal data is now nominal data as you can see there are pic there are, uh, up the picture you have four persons standing here three persons out of the four has a tick mark that and the other one has uh, a signboard like need a job so from this picture it is clear that the three persons who have the tick mark are employed and the other one is an unemployed person so again let's have a look at the uh, definition and then you connect the picture with the definition so data representing the presence or absence of attributes in a group of items are termed as nominal data here the units are assumed to be measured according to the nominal scale where no importance is given to the magnitude relationships nominal scale represents the absence of an attribute by zero and its presence by one where zero and one new are just numericals for namesake now I'm going to take an example over here so that you can connect this picture with the example now let a represents the employed and B represents the unemployed okay now let one represents the attribute that is a and zero represents the attribute that is B then in a group of 10 persons if I take a 10 persons we can represent these attributes using the nominal data as 1110011011 so from this data from this numerical data we can arrive at a conclusion that the first person is employed how because we have said that A represents employed and let 1 represent the attribute that is A. So it is clear that when you connect your definition with the example, the nominal scale represents the absence of an attribute by 0 and its presence by 1. So I, 
according to our uh, example the employed a represents the employed and that means the at it possesses an attribute and uh, we are giving it as number one and whereas b represents unemployed that is we are giving the attribute uh, value as zero because it's the absence of an attribute okay so that is the case of uh, nominal data and that is the example that i just wanted to share with you now we will move on to the next data that is ordinal data so let's have a look at uh, the definition first data presenting ordering or ranking of units in ascending or descending order of magnitude are called ordinal data now let's consider an example the weights of a baby born on a particular day so i have collected the weights of the babies born on a particular day and it's nothing but 2 3 2.2 2.5 3.5 3.2 and 3.3 okay all the weights are in kgs now in a table i have written their weights in ascending order you can also write this uh, weights in descending order also and i'm going to rank these um, like one for weight two two for two point two so this is an ascending order and i'm going to give them ranks now let's connect with the uh, definition that is given so here the units are assumed to be measured according to the ordinal scale the importance is given to the magnitudinal relationship so just note that what uh, here we give importance to the magnitudinal relationship and in an ordinal scale arranges the units in ascending or descending order and what we do is after arranging in ascending or descending order we just give them uh, we just assign them different ranks okay in an orderly manner so this is one of the example of our ordinal data now let's move on to the sources of data like from where we we will get data now the, there are mainly two sources of data one is primary data and the other one is secondary data now what is primary data primary data are those measurements which are observed as a part of an original study they are obtained by a study specifically designed to fulfill the data needs of a problem at the end they are generated through a large number of surveys conducted mostly by the government also some by some individuals institutions and research bodies and for example the data obtained in a population census you know people coming to your house collecting data uh, every 10 years so that is called census i hope you all know that and the data obtained in the population census by the office of registrar general and census commissioner uh, ministry of home affairs are etc are called primary data okay so these are some of the examples even if you collect uh, data for your own uh, use uh, but you should collect it by like uh, you should take a poll or you should go in person and if you collect some data that is also called as primary data it need not be like always the government uh, i have specifically uh, said that some individuals institutions research bodies all the all of them or each individual can collect data but uh, if it should be primary then it should be a part of an original study the measurements or the observations that is should be recorded should be a part of an original study and she should go in person to collect those data you should not depend upon another person so when you depend upon another person that becomes a secondary data so now let's have a closer look on what secondary data is and before that I would like to uh, tell a few methods for collecting primary data before moving on to the secondary data now there are several methods to collect primary data the first method is you can uh, as I said direct personal observation telephonic survey indirect personal interviews you can also send um, questionnaires also that I will come to information received through local agents and as I said you can mail questionnaires questionnaire you can mail directly another one is questionnaire you can send through enumerators you should but for that you have to train your enumerators and you have to send questionnaire with them and then 
uh, you can collect the data. So these are some of the methods that you use uh, to collect primary data. All these methods have their advantages and limitations as well. Will I have give? Uh, I will give you a detailed PDF on this. Now, what is a secondary data? Secondary data are compiled by someone uh, other than the users. As I said earlier, when I uh, finished off primary data, I said there is another kind of data called as secondary data. And data which are not originally collected but rather obtained from published sources, published sources such as uh, some government officials or government uh, offices uh, publish uh, reports regarding certain issues or certain uh, matters. So from there you can collect data. Those are called published sources or there can be unpublished sources you can collect data from unpublished sources like if your friend has collected the data on the height and weight of the students of a particular class or your college but it's not published anywhere else and if you ask him or her to hand over the data for your uh, analysis and if he hands over the data to you then it is a secondary data for yourself but a primary data for that person and yes it is an unpublished source because he hasn't published everywhere. If he have published it somewhere, then again, it is a uh, published data, but again, a secondary data, that is. For example, information collected through census or government departments like housing, social security, electoral uh, statistics, tax records, etc. Now, methods of collecting data in a secondary data, as I said earlier, published sources and the second one is unpublished sources. So with that, we come to an end of what data is, types of data. There are more classification than what I have said right now, which will be discussed in part two. And then uh, we have come to uh, the sources of data where we see uh, there are two main uh, sources of data which is primary data and secondary data and we have also ha had a look at the methods of collecting primary data and secondary data and uh, the detailed uh, advantages and the limitation of both uh, primary and secondary data will be provided in a PDF it will be uploaded in a modal platform uh, very soon. Thank you. I hope you have all understood the session. Thank you so much.